Today I was watching a documentary and it had to do with Dave Chappelle. And it's a show on, I think it's on Hulu and it talks about Dave Chappelle. And it's, it's interesting because one of the things that, that I do is I really follow Dave Chappelle. I think Dave Chappelle is an incredible storyteller. I think Dave Chappelle has a way of characterizing historical events factually in such a way that it compels you to not only listen to the story, but to understand more and to try to gather additional information to help understand what is it that he was actually talking about. But it's well, what I thought. What I thought was interesting about the uh, this, this one uh, special was that it was a group of individuals telling Dave Chappelle's story. But the problem I saw with that was he wasn't on the documentary. And so like I do with most celebrities in the social media age is I send an email or a message. In this case, I sent Dave Chappelle an Instagram message or I, I slid in his DMs to ask him, are you in front of, or is this, are you okay with this documentary or is this something else that the uh, that that the outlets are are used doing on your behalf, or the the media folks are doing on your behalf, and uh, so we'll see where that is, and that'll give me an impression of whether or not I could stand behind the quality of that documentary. So I won't I won't go too much further into that, but I, what I think is important is that we all have to tell our stories, and and this leads me into something I was thinking about quite a bit today. Um, some of you may have recognize or remember that I, I have a friend of mine that's retiring soon. Well, today was his day to give notice. And so we had a conversation a couple of days ago and he was asking me about how do I give notice? What's the best way to give notice? And, you know, there's a few ways to give notice. You could go out and you can tell everybody what the hell was wrong with them the entire time you were working there. And what that does is that allows them to put you into a bucket. So then you're just that angry fill in the blank. Um, and it becomes easy to dismiss. Or you could give a, a nice story about how your life's work is accumulated to this moment and you had this great opportunity. You know, whatever the case is, there's always going to be a different way to do it. But it was interesting because I remember when I retired, I retired from a job that I enjoyed the work I was able to do, but it was incredibly difficult because I think the environment was incredibly toxic. There were bullies in my midst and it was tough because I wasn't able to really fully be myself and express myself, which is going to have the long term impact now of me living a truth that's different than the truth that I actually live. Um, one of the things you have to live with when you're six foot eight is when you assert yourself too strongly, when you say things too strongly, uh, people will take it as being aggressive. People will put something else behind it that's not necessarily true you're just saying this doesn't work for me and i don't agree with the concept that you have but unfortunately when you're tall when you're big in stature people will interpret that or sometimes they will use that as a way to push their own narrative and so when you when you start thinking about work and you start thinking about you know who you are at work and what you do at work and what you say at work all of us I don't care who you are. We all have to fall into a specific box in order to fit in the environments that we're in. So when I told, when he gave notice, the question that I asked him was, do you A, want to be known as the guy that goes out blazing trails because there were a bunch of things that were uh, difficult in the environment? Um, and if so, great. But do you think the environment's going to change and what good do they actually do? Do they just say, well, you know, this individual now, we'll just call him Sabado uh, for lack of a better term. So is Sabado going to make this environment better? No. The people that are there, they're going to continue to be there. They're going to continue doing what it is that they do. Um, and then the next, the, the other side of that coin is, do you, um, do you go in and you just tell them, something that's uh I, i'm trying to think of the term and that's the funny thing about youtube is you're saying all of these things and you want to get them right because i don't like doing five or six different takes uh because i think it takes away the organicness of of what i'm conveying because i'm, I'm really just giving it to you the giving you the world in the way that i see it uh, from sabado that retired cat but the the 
it, but when you when you don't speak in your own on your own, then you're not being organic. Then you're not being yourself. Then you're being manufactured. Then you're being you're playing the company line. But if you give them the message that you uh, in a, in a user friendly kind of way, then it creates a different type of dynamic. And that dynamic is you're leaving, and at this moment you can choose to be anywhere else in the world, and the place that you don't want to be is there. And so, and if you were doing good work, you're doing good work, you accomplish some things, then what it leaves for the other group or for the people that you're leaving is it leaves a sense of, yeah, this person's leaving, they're leaving on good terms, but what is it that they can really say to you? What is it that they can, how can they impact, you know, your existence? What are they going to say about you? Oh, this person did a good job and they left. This person was accomplished what they needed to accomplish, and then they left. Um, and I know in my own example, um, when I left my the organization I was working with, you know, it was two years of an, indif- an incredibly difficult uh, environment where everything you do is questioned. There's no support for the function. Um, you're constantly getting undermined and questioned by people in public forums. And again, I know it's wham, 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 I'm just whining, but at this point, I don't, I don't really care because I don't have to go back. But, but the one thing I was able to do against those odds is I was able to get results. I was able to get things done. I was able to move the needle. So as much as people wanted to hate on me, I was still able to move the needle. So then when I left, I didn't leave because I got fired. I didn't get leave because I got pressure. I left because when I ran those numbers, I think in the first episode I mentioned, when we ran those numbers and they said they can do it, that we could, that we were going to be able to retire, well, guess what? It was a no-brainer. And so when I went into my boss, I explained to my boss that while I appreciated the work that I was able to do here and I appreciated the opportunity to do some of the stuff that I was able to do, the time has come for me to retire early and I'm going to do that. Um, because again, a lot of people in retirement, they'll stick around because they love what they're doing. So that clearly wasn't the message. And what I told him was, you don't need another me in this environment. You know, you have a person with this title and this stature and this type that brings this type of experience, but you really don't need that. What you need is somebody who's transactional, who's not going to get in a strategy and who's going to be, you know, basically an order taker. And I left it at that. Did it piss him off? Probably did, but I don't care because at the end of the day, I did what was best for myself and my family. I did good work when I was there and I tried to get there. And, and so to, to culminate this whole idea, uh, to bringing it back and kind of tying in Dave Chappelle, is Dave Chappelle has always been unapologetic about his path, what he's done. He's been very, very uh, intentional about what it is that he's doing. He's very clear about why he's doing it. But the thing that Dave Chappelle does is Dave Chappelle does what Dave Chappelle thinks is best for Dave Chappelle, which is what we all should do. You know, our society tells us that if you don't do things that are in the best interest of everyone else, you're somehow a bad person. Well, that's bullshit. You've got to do what's right for yourself, because if you don't take care of yourself and something happens to you, then none of the rest of the stuff matters. But I think that he's always done what was best for him. When Dave Chappelle left that $50 million deal for um, Comedy Central for the Chappelle show, it was because there was somebody that wanted him to change what it is that he was talking about as a, as a, uh, as a, as a condition of, of doing that show. And as an artist, that would be like somebody coming on to me and said, hey, Sabado, we want you to change your your YouTube channel. We want you to change the way that you express things. We want you to be more X, Y, and Z. I could take that into account, but it's not going to stop me from doing, uh, doing additional episodes because I have total complete control. And that's what you have to have when you're an artist. And so he walked away from that. And so when you, when, and they came back, he made some other comments. And again, I'm not going to get into whether or not I agree or disagree with the comments, um, we haven't evolved that far in the uh, in our relationship. So I'm sure down the road we'll get into some some deeper uh, formulations of my of my opinion sets, and I'll share with you some of my opinions on different things. But at this point, um, 
you know, I know that he said some things that were controversial and that tra- that crossed the line uh, in terms of certain certain views out there and people thought he was going to be canceled. And what he did was, as he came back and he didn't run away from it, he explained why he did it and then he kept going. My, my, my point to you is, is if everything you do in your life is for a specific reason, or as they say, every behavior meets a need, then you should never apologize for things that are done for the right reason and for the best of yourself and your family. When you retire, don't think about how's it going to affect the organization, because the reality is, is that the company is going to go on. They went on before you got there. They will go on after you go there. People are going to care. You know, you're going to have your friends that you had and and people that like you are going to continue to like you. But that when you retire, you now have 40 hours a week in front of you that you could do anything you want or nothing at all with. Those people are still there. And you quickly start to realize how much time 40 hours in a week is because those phone calls start to stop, start to slow down. You don't have as many of the conversations. You know, I had lunch with a, an ex-colleague of mine, and it was good, but I wasn't talking about work. I was talking about making YouTube channels, playing the piano, going on vacations, doing a bunch of different types of things, which is what you're supposed to do in retirement. But, you know, there's a lot of people that are trying to make you feel bad about the fact that you retire, particularly if you, if you retire early. Oh, you look too young to retire. You look this, you look that. And my response is, no, I'm old enough to know the value of time and I'm not going to take more time away from my well-being than necessary. Um, And I think that's what Dave Chappelle did when he was a young child. I I, I recommend anybody go back to the Oprah episode where he talked about why he left and went to Africa. One of the few times that he talked about that out loud where you could get some absolute facts, which incidentally enough, was not characterized the same way in the um, in the documentary that I was watching. So, you know, again, I, I think I don't know whether or not I would recommend or not recommend the documentary because I am not going to recommend something that takes away and speaks for another individual that they did not condone. And the fact that Dave Chappelle was not in the documentary or was not part of the narrative um, speaking for himself. I can't support it because you can take a person's comedy that was owned by another entity and sell that to somebody else. Just like uh, Michael Jackson can sell the Beatles, could have sold the Beatles to somebody else because he owns the rights. Or as Jay-Z always talks about selling your masters, you can always sell those masters to somebody else, but you can't take away what somebody says. And if somebody has a feeling that's as important as it seemed to be, Uh, telling Dave Chappelle's story, then I will tell you that Dave Chappelle would have wanted to tell that story. I could be wrong, but I think it's the same for you. Tell your story. Own your story. You're going to make a lot of decisions, some of which are going to be decisions that that people don't like. People are going to talk bad about you. You're going to get haters. But if it's the best thing for yourself and for your family, then you have an obligation to do do it for yourself. It's like Five Dog said in A Tribe Called Quest. He says, I'm on my own jock still, because if I don't say I'm the best, tell me who the hell will. Folks, stand up for yourself, tell your own story, and don't let anybody else be the teller of your story or the taker of your dream. You deserve it. This is Sabado Gigante. I got your back 100%. Out.